Live Code Hangout. We're working on the Western Friend website. The source code is available on GitHub under the Western Friend organization and the WF website project. The task is to switch to PayPal for our payment processor. So far I've gone through the bookstore and converted those payments over to regular PayPal orders and I'm in the process of the subscriptions model. So this is sort of done and the bookstore shopping cart I uh, fixed this issue but basically it works now. Now we're working on the subscription page. As an aside we also have a donation page <clears throat> or button which I will need to figure out a simple way to essentially launch this donation popover or modal. So I'll leave that unchecked. Most likely there will be a, a donate button here on our navigation menu and when you click this there will be a setting that has the the variable in this form is just I think our PayPal organization ID or, or merchant ID or whatever they call it and maybe a specific donation widget or campaign. I'll have to look more into that but essentially it's taking this copy and paste code that PayPal will give us for the donation block and taking the variable part out which will change between environments we have our sandbox and then our production environment and storing the non-variable part somehow in our project in a template and putting the variable parts in the database or an environment variable all right well let's continue with this subscription page it's our focus of the day so we're going to be removing a lot of code from the project as well as adding code right now i'm in a I wonder if there's a way of fixing a bit different. So I'll just eh, not fight this. I'll just ignore it. Type ignore those. Now this type stuff is really helpful. Let's make sure I'm being consistent and the interface I advertise here to my caller will give me what I expect. All right, so let's just commit these real quick. This is an example of some PayPal script that I get. It, this is untracked. I'm not. This is just for like a help me remind remember later. The only variable part is here, our subscription plan, and we'll use this in a template which I don't have open. Essentially, I'll store the non-variable stuff like the. Well, perhaps these could be variables as well in the template, and then the variable thing will be in an environment variable or wagtail setting or in this live code uh, stream we're going to put them in a sort of block so wagtail block let's get to that part so that i can start testing this a little bit more end to end right now i'm kind of um coding in the dark you know using my um using my pi and, and things to help and relying on the PayPal generated source code so I have some confidence that that works but now our subscription um, page subscribe form is going to change so if, <clears throat> it consists of two elements at, at the very least uh, we have basically this well what I should do is just take out what we don't need I think to clarify things 
we are our subscription model was completely living in our code and now we're moving everything over into PayPal so it's for better or for worse going to be managed everything is coming out wow which in some of the ways it's better is that means less code <laughs> We just need to link it to a user so when they're logged in, they have access to the um, members only section, which is very minimal. It's just the latest, latest three issues and everything else is public dating back to 1929, I think. And then a PayPal subscription ID where we'll get all the other information. Wow. Field panel user and field panel PayPal subscription ID. That's it. Read only true. <laughs> you know, in a way, I like this. <sighs> Removing code is sort of satisfy. You know, gives a little bit of satisfaction to say, oh, that is something we no longer have to maintain. And it's reduced to just a couple of helpers. In this helper I wrote in the last session, but basically it'll fetch the subscription from PayPal and check the status if it's active or not. And it'll cache that value for 24 hours. So there are some gotchas, cache invalidation or cache ejection or whatever it would be called is a bit tricky. There can be some things that crop up in the, in the uh, margins. I've already kind of thought of a, at least one possibility I don't know how probable it is, but a person who they let their subscription lapse and they renew it, and then for the 24 hours during the cache lifespan, their subscription is not available. But I thought of a way I could manually eject this by. Uh, we'll have later in the session on the successful payment where I'm going to need to redirect the person to something, some page, and so I'll probably redirect them to their their my subscription page. On that, my subscription page, anytime somebody visits that, we can make the call to PayPal because they'll be logged in and they will be, I'm just trying to avoid a denial of service sort of attack surface here. You have to be logged in, but it's sort of anybody can log in and then visit their, my subscription page over and over and over. It's gonna make a call to PayPal. It's a, I think a blocking call. Hence, I wanna use the caching, but I can debounce that call. So the first time you hit it, it's gonna make the thing, it's guaranteed to, refresh it the problem is also that could crop up is i'm not sure the timeline the time span if in paypal systems the subscription will be marked as active immediately or if there could be some delay even in our the short request response cycle of paying for a subscription and then redirecting them to their profile page which is out of our hands in a way so it's non-trivial but i don't think it's worth like really big amount of effort at this point it's a very remote possibility i'm just trying to think of what what other possibilities might arise? So then we don't have their full name anymore. We don't have cost. We don't have, we don't need this. Wow, our subscription model became almost nothing. I'm just getting, look at all this commented out code. This module is gonna be very thin now. I like that, but it's at the same time kind of a, a loss. But in order to support a fully fledged PayPal integration where we do have these, types of information in our backend and synchronizing it with PayPal API and all that, that would be a sort of monumental effort. And I'm, it's really unfortunate. I think that that's part of the reason why the PayPal has the model they do is to really lock you into their platform. Everything, all your data is in their system and you, by the default flow, at least don't have much recourse. Whereas at least Braintree, everything could live in our system. And I just needed a little bit of a, a thin, uh, interaction with Braintree to handle the payment, their payment processor, and that's as far as they need to, and you know, also our subscription manager, but uh, we, they don't need all the subscription data to handle a recurring payment. It really is just a recurring payment. And that's the thing that these companies are getting more and more their claws into the subscription and makes it hard to maneuver away from PayPal, for example, or I, I understand the incentive and it may not be 
malicious, but I think, you know, it's intentional on some level. Well, I can't speculate much further than that. All right, so we will have this page that will render, that will help uh, be used for not all of this, but rendering the subscription form. In fact, most of this is going to go away. I don't think I'll need any of this, which is kind of cool. But what we will need are a couple of configurations here. Um, it's like a, basically a field. I'm going to put some wagtail blocks. Wagtail has this cool thing called a stream field that lets you um, give the content manager a way to construct pages based on common blocks or components, page components, you could call them. They could be React components. There's no real specific limitation. It's just essentially, they could even be, I think, just JSON blobs. The rendering. The key is it renders at two places. One is on the Wagtail editing page. You'll have some fields for the configuration, and then it renders in the user interface as a templated component. And a templated language can be anything. It's by default the Django templating language. We'll come back to this later. So they call it a stream field because you have a bunch of them, and they can be nested in arbitrary depth. It's very powerful. We don't need this anymore. This is the key, I think, in the manage subscription page where I will work to ensure that we have the, the current status, this current subscription status in a way that won't let people kind of like hammer our system and cause undue burden. I want to be cognizant of that, but we've got to give people a key to jiggle the handle, so to speak. If there's some sort of caching issue on the edge of their subscription boundary and they did renew, but it hasn't evicted the cash, uh, Whatever, man, I can never say that word. And, or PayPal hasn't <clears throat> updated the status yet for whatever internal process is going on there. Essentially, this managed subscription page should give you a little bit of like, try it again in an hour type of debouncing instead of 24 hour cycle. We could say it could take up to 30 minutes to an hour for the subscription to propagate <laughs> to our system or something. Please try again. Uh, that way I could debounce it and this would essentially every time aside the debouncer it would always call the latest wow look at this so this module is going to go boom that means we don't need wow any of that that this this really we just have a couple of wagtail things we're defining a model and we're rendering and we'll need a stream field widget in a minute and this paypal service that i wrote which is a very 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 thin paypal wrapper nothing uh, comprehensive it's just what we need. And it looks like we don't need this anymore. <laughs> well, and this. Wow. All right, that's it. I think I'll just go ahead and uh, we will need this. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I was a bit looking at only the yellow text at the end and not the beginning. doing it I'm just gonna commit it this is a huge pull request oh man I hope I don't screw myself on this pull request I really because it feels like an all or nothing we have to go all the way to PayPal if I deploy these changes and we have a when I merge to main it deploys to our staging environment if I deploy these changes it'll break staging so I have to like pull these over the line it's all or nothing this transition of our payment processor it's a big transition in a way in, in a way it is I think so I'm just going to go with the big pull request. That's a good point. I don't think we do anymore because the editor, I'm not even sure if they can create subscriptions in the PayPal interface. I looked and I couldn't figure it out. I'll remove that. Is that a thing? Editable? Swappable. Let me see here. I think I hit twice. No, that was there. Okay, I'll leave it in there. Is it swappable the thing now? That seems more like it. And the paid is going to be determined by the active status in the PayPal uh, API call. So we will need an index so that we can uh, search this. And the user index is automatically created on foreign key fields. I don't know if this should be read only if there is some way to create subscriptions offline. I'm going to leave it read only now because that is the link to PayPal. And without that link, if it somehow gets edited and changed, things will break essentially. So 
we can display it, but not allow it to be edited. And by the way, this is a feature I requested in Wagtail. Some, I think about two years ago, unless it got implemented. And it's, in my perspective, you know, I'm really grateful to have a responsive uh, development team and community behind things where I, for example, had this idea, didn't really have the know-how to implement it, but people weren't like negative about it and pushing it away. They let it percolate in the backlog and somebody else said, yeah, I need that as well and ended up getting implemented. That's kind of a pretty refreshing. I think Wagtail and Torchbox, particularly who are the main stewards and developer of the Wagtail CMS, they really have a good uh, user focus and they realize that developers are the are some of the main users as well as the content managers. And so they have both on both sides of the coin, the user experience is excellent for people who are managing the content on a day-to-day -day basis and continuing to improve such as by adding accessibility and other usability enhancements, but also on the developer experience side. The documentation tends to be really high quality. The responsiveness in things like Stack Overflow or on GitHub is like sometimes almost immediate. And you know, it does take some time in cases to percolate an idea, accept or reject it and implement it. And I've had some ideas that have been rejected as well. I don't have any hard feelings about this. I understand. Uh, uh, the the nature of ideas are not everyone is good idea and there are certain trade-offs and constraints with every decision so anyway I just is another reason why I highly recommend this wagtail CMS if you're starting a new project that is mainly you know uh, a crud app that's dealing with content management and it's going to have more multiple end users who are managing that content it's a very good option and you want to have a nice developer experience it's also being built on Django it gives you that by default. All right, here we go. Python ecosystem is also very mature, somewhat uh, stable, but uh, at the same time, capable of growth and adaptation. All right, so now we went down to 90, about 100 lines, about 100 lines. So we're looking good. So our subscription becomes only two fields, a <laughs> user, so that they can access the, the magazine issues and PayPal subscription ID, which links to all of the info in PayPal. And then there's a property here that's uh, dynamic, so it behaves like a field, but it's going to make a call to PayPal, which is cached and debounced. My teacup is empty. I'll take a quick break to refresh. We'll commit this and I will close this stuff here and open the pull request where we're working. I should have mentioned this at the start of the stream. If you'd like to just uh, see the changes that were made in the course of um, porting our project from Braintree to PayPal and imp implementing PayPal payments and subscriptions, this is the place to look. Cool, you can just check the files change. It's quite hefty, I understand. And if you just wanna see the final outcome, you can just view source. I don't know what it'll be at this state in time in the future. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going for it. I'm gonna commit this, wow, oh, actually, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a problem then. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So basically what's happening here is one of our old... Sub um, one of our old migrations is using a function that I'm removing in this commit. This, is, this happens every once in a while. I get some historic artifact that's been removed. One thing I can do is just this. You can actually edit that. And what I'll do also is probably squash these migrations. Hmm, maybe. Massive. Massive change there. We like simplification, and I know that simplification in one place often implies complexification in another. It's not it's like there's some like balance of entropy that has to exist. You can't like uh, it's like energy can't be created or destroyed. Maybe, but it seems like things trending towards entropy. I don't know. <laughs> 
or whatever it is, complexity at least. I don't think they're quite the same concept. All right, let's push this up. So let's say minus 249 current delta. Refresh the page. Minus 249 going, going. Minus 574. So as pull requests go, this is a large one. It's not huge, not massive, but big. T-shirt size. Getting out of the <laughs> out of the normal range of t-shirt sizes. We'll have to shop at the big people store. What do they call it? Big and tall. Big and tall is what it's called in the US. Okay. I still, I guess we still have a little extra large to go. Yeah, now I'm getting some messages from our CI process. It's like, hey, you're, everything's breaking. Alarms are going off. You're, what are you doing? So while I'm here in this mood, we don't need this anymore. We don't need this file. Delete. Move to trash. Wow. Oh, my. So these can all go. That's unfortunate. Yeah, this uh, it's a bit unfortunate. So let's type and know that. Nonetheless, I have proper annotation here. So tell on somebody somewhere what this is. Here, no, there's no type annotation because this is a generic method that can re sub factory can return any other factory, and uh, those factories return any other arbitrary model. So yeah, can't fix that. Nonetheless, we have right annotation. So let's clean that up. This is fine. The models we just did tests. Oh man. Oh man. I'll have, to, oh, I'll have to think about this. I'm gonna have to just probably delete all this. Everything is irrelevant now. Oh, this is, man, this is extensive. If all we do today is delete progress to Can't do any filtering anymore. Inspect is good. I don't think we even need ins. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because what I can do is this. I have a property on the model called is active. So this is where the admin can check the is active property. Now I could just do that when rendering the table, and hopefully it would do it lazily, lazily, and not block the whole. This is going to, Wagtail is going to use this to generate a listing of all the subscriptions. And these fields are stored in the database. This property comes from, you know, PayPal has to make an HTTP request. We do cache the value, but it's when listing all of the subscriptions, there's no guarantee or there's probably a lower likelihood that most of the users would have logged in, in the last 24 hours. So there's going to be a significant number of HTTP requests. It's not a super busy website. So I would prefer at least deferring this HTTP request until we inspect it. If that's even how this works, I don't know if the inspect view defers it, whatever happens, renders the template on request. I suspect that the PayPal engineers are doing something like that because they're using a single page application framework. So they have the ability to make, and they have this kind of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but this kind of um, transpilation framework that synchronizes Python and JavaScript code in ways that's sort of magical. That's how I can describe it as magic. So my assumption here is that hypothetically, I, I don't know. Oh, it's a note to myself. If otherwise, yeah. Note to self, little details. Oops, but I do want to, I want to comment that out for now. So if it can lazily load those is actives, it's okay that we make a bunch of HTTP requests. If they're sort of async and they kind of come into the template dynamically. So this is where the single page app architecture is effective. You can also do this with, with um, things like HTTPX, which um, Wagtail is not HTMX, HTMX. And I'm, 
not writing any of the wagtail admin code and uh you can override it but it's just out of my it's above my pay grade right now and uh i just don't have the knowledge or time to dig into that so yeah it's available possible but uh, let's kind of come back to this i've got to do's to do's to do all right so that's that just simplified that this subscription web hub view so any brain tree stuff doesn't compute now i'm holding shift and it's not it's going down i have to hold control shift is horizontal or just no modifier shift to select that's my brain is getting garbled for now that's that i don't know it'll be a request probably what is all this blue stuff Yeah, it's defined here. No need. I'll just leave it like this. It's just the helper function. Ah, uh, here we go to get the request from PayPal. All this, and uh, in a way, this should move into the PayPal module. To be honest, yeah. This could be the essentially PayPal IPN or something like that. This could be the solution to making the status live in our database, so we wouldn't need these HTTP requests. If and when we cross this bridge. I'll change the data model accordingly, but in this interim period, I'm gonna rely on these helpers to uh, hook. Yeah, this is good, I like it. This will be a follow-up issue though. And while I'm here, while I'm here, I don't need any kind of, uh, well, I just wanna remind myself. So essentially the dispatcher should only operate more, more or less at the request response level and much of the and perhaps just getting the body into a usable format that's reasonable but after that really interesting <laughs> so apparently uh copilot knows a little bit about the structure of this paypal but i need to know perhaps everything's in the body yeah and this function will need that context i think so actually uh, so let's go for example Here's one way I could use exclusively webhooks and not have to worry about this callback. I don't know that. Again, this is about the asynchronous nature of this interaction between our system and PayPal. I don't know. I can't just, I don't know how long the webhook would take. There could be things on PayPal systems that take seconds or minutes. So the brain tree model was a bit better that we would have this nonce and everything would be more or less immediately verifiable. I could kind of have trust that things would shake out and eventual consistency wasn't necessary. But now, because it was like immediately consistent, but now it's a bit different. So I actually didn't just, all I'm gonna do is move this to the PayPal module. That's interesting, it could be very generic. Ah, <laughs> yeah, this is the one we can't do, right? But it's if I convert this from a property to a field, then we can do that. Sorry, no, it's basically a no-op. It's just a little database hit. Okay, so what we'll do is then this is now PayPal specific, more or less. So what I can do is just come over here to the, the subscription views, PQR, PayPal views. Let's rename this to webhooks because it doesn't have to be called views.py. This is very specific webhook. You know, it's a convention. Now what we can do is come over here to PayPal. Webhooks, move it. Ugh, look at all this breaking code. I'll come back to this. We're gonna be working on this today. Just get to a little bit of a spot. All right, let's see. There's now just a bunch of things I can clean up. What am I doing tests? Nothing yet. Yeah, and this is essentially our template and you can see we're using this value plan ID here and then getting a value back from PayPal with which I will redirect to either success or the my subscription page I'm trying to glue all this together it's just an incremental process I got to keep a bunch of things in my mind and work at them chip away I don't have a to-do list this is I'm kind of just in it ah uh, yeah so then then 
We don't need this file URLs part at all. It's the only thing that's doing is subscription URLs is uh, handling the webhook. I'll come back to the webhook later. So subscription and this PayPal JS is this kind of placeholder thing. Uh, I don't think I need it anymore. It's I've already got a template for this. So let's just static subscription is unnecessary. So static is unnecessary. Delete that. It's not tracked. It's not needed. I can get it from PayPal again. URL of pi is unneeded. Kind of pruning tests. A lot of this is unneeded. This is huge. 600 lines. So these test cases don't make sense anymore. You know, brain tree stuff especially, but the form tests don't make sense anymore. Most of these have been removed now, which will break things. That's a good line. A good way of telling. So I can look at this test case setup. So this is the webhook test case. Don't need it. It'll be in the brain. It'll be in a future development. Oh wait. So subscription webhook. Let's collapse it. Everything here, eighty lines or so. We don't need subscription test case. Well, we need a user, and actually we have a factory for that. But okay. Uh, we don't need to check the price. Don't need to check the total cost. Don't need to check the full name. Uh, the string is an alright test. So let's do that. And tear down. They're very thin. So format this. So there's that. Subscription webhook view. Don't need it. So don't need it. Uh, we're not going to use this um, form anymore. The index page we will use. We we won't have the form. In don't need the price component check. Don't need a validated form check. We will want to redirect unauthenticated users to a login. We don't need the form check. All right, down to 100 lines, good. Don't need the form anymore. Index is good. Login required. Manage subscription page is good. The thing is, we won't need any of these. I'll have to get this. This means something slightly different now. It's, it means the same thing, but the implementation detail is a bit different. Because these are, that's the active check. And I may or I will probably not, depending on the, how we go with the webhook and storing the active property or the HTTP. I see what I'm doing. So when I, I want to scroll down while selecting multiple lines, I just scroll in. I don't want to quite break the implementation. This is sort of incorrect now. It's progress. So, oh, come. and this is under development. I may be able to commit this. I don't know about the views yet. I'll come back to this. I don't think so yet. No, probably a lot of this is going to go. Let's push these up and check the delta again. I'm just curious. Minus 574. Then I'll take a quick break. We're at just one hour into the stream. All right, looks like the video camera had frozen, but we're good to go now. So 574. Minus 1,000. Plus 838 because we're moving stuff. So kind of canceling each other out almost. Not quite. No, no. It's twice as many. This is getting into the extra large zone, which they do carry in Walmart and those other super chains. Oh, heck, they carry it around here <laughs> in all the stores. In fact, extra large is the new large, I think, at this point in human history. All right. I need a quick break and uh, we'll come back. Five minute break. Come back and continue. I believe we're ready to add the additive process where we're going to start working with the PayPal subscription plans into PayPal sandbox, then getting those into the subscription page, rendering those in a kind of a grid or a row. I'll need a couple of abstract components for that. We already have a row component and uh, I'll need to essentially create a component for the PayPal subscription card that will render in the row number of those where's the issue 
right here. So this is what we're going to build right here. Essentially, we have this component that's invisible. It's a row component using the bootstrap kind of semantics. I'm not inventing a CSS framework here or using Tailwind. I just think that would be a bit excessive, and I don't want a JavaScript build tool in the loop of all this stuff. I just want to use a framework, a CSS thing, and use some uh, declarative attributes and mix my presentation slightly with the structure, but not massively like utility functions do. So the structure, the layout, bootstrap, row, and column classes are good semantics here. We'll have a row with columns, and each column will have a basically a custom component, custom wagtail block that renders the subscription form given a subscription ID, and that'll come from the sandbox. All right, so that's where we'll be heading in a moment. I'll just take a, about a five-minute break. Thank you very much uh, for your patience. All right, back at it. Now I'm going to remove pay, um, Braintree from the project, which may indirectly remove requests. So i got to figure out where request is coming from. I'm making a top-level dependency, I think, at this point, because our code does depend on it. So to do that, to do that, I just edit our PyProject. I got in my own little bespoke. It's not always wise to do this bespoke stuff, but I'm using PyProject Toml to define our dependencies. And I'm gonna add this to our pre-commit configuration. This is just helping helping me find dependencies. Did we already add Bado3? Okay, there it is. You know, it's not super hard to scan, but sometimes you get things that are pretty long. All right, so that, that flag was uh, hallucinated. That's cool, that's cool. <clears throat> Let's see if the exclusion one, basically I know I'll never want to sort uh, things in our migrations files. Uh, I think that's the right pattern for it. Anyway, dot slash star migrations. I don't know, start up. Uh, Mm, apparently, yeah. So that changed our pi project. See, now it's nice, nice and sorted. Because in this dependency level, it doesn't matter. There's no chain. There's no graph, dependency graph here. It's just a, a, a list. So I'm just gonna say remove. What I did was sort and remove it once. Let's just let's do these in separate commits. I don't know. Uh, pi project toml. Index though, by Project Tomo. See that one, Brain Tree. Maybe that would work. I don't know. It's a good guess though. Wow, this is interesting. This is coming in now. What I would like is this to be in the pull request when I create a pull request. Now we'll come over to Brain Tree. Remove that. It'll remain sorted. Then I'll use my little helper. To compile the depths and what this basically does is it calls um, pip utilities or something like this it's mainly using pip I'm just trying to move my project over to pi project Tom on pip purely ideally I wouldn't have to use poetry or pi pip uh, pip end or whatever the heck they are you know these like other all all these other packaging manager utilities they introduce their own dependencies and their own complexities and their own uh, oftentimes kind of bugs in the developer experience. I'm trying to be as pure as possible, but I still want to have um, one is a dependency graph, but also perhaps a lock lock file. And of course, being able to define things in PyProject Toml, which is the current way of doing it in order to satisfy I think the needs of just having this compiled file like this, I can't remember specifically, but I introduced another project requirement, hip tools. It's fairly well maintained. You know, ideally I wouldn't even need pip tools, but it does have this, this pip compile and pip sync, which makes it easy to upgrade everybody, I think as well. I need a sort of for CI purposes. I need this requirements text from our dependencies, which are defined in Py Project Toml, both dev and uh, production. So that happens, and this is also like a bonus. It tells me 
where the dependency came from. Is it a transitive dependency from one of our top level dependencies? If it's Western Friend website, this is a top level dependency. Otherwise, Boto Core is a transitive dependency. And all I did to glue things together without requiring any other build tool external to pip. I, you know, we can instantiate this whole project with just pip install requirements dev uh, and text. And then I have a little helper function here. Yeah, it's, it's done, so this is a brief aside. Basically, it's called develop.py, and it's just a series of commands. Compile depths just runs some commands. Pip tool is, compi pip tool is compile, and then it removes this egg. Uh, if I could get rid of this somehow to the compile, if I could pass an argument to not output this egg, that would be cool. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, now I can add in our develop.py, I can add other commands, and this is just pure Python, and it's able to call system commands and it doesn't even require anything outside of the uh, Python standard library in order for the script to run now and the commands within it well they will need an environment so pip tools has to be so you have to run first you have to set up Python environment in a conventional way though don't need poetry or any of that so yeah this is just the helper class I think is a kind of a good compromise I like poetry but honestly it breaks things and uh, it's not worth the hassle it's just you know the same thing with Pip and all these things. They just introduce other complexities that have trade-offs and break stuff. And I'd like to just move straight to Python core and as closely as possible. So my little develop pi is a thin wrapper. So we've upgraded our, we've let's see, locked the dependencies. I've removed Boto, not Boto, uh, Braintree. And then locked the dependencies. And mainly we will see here, request is coming only from, I guess, Wagtail now. Not brain tree and wagtail, so I'm not, I'm risking losing requests. I need to move this to a top level. And I removed the brain tree dependency, so I'll add requests as a top level dependency. Granted, this is a wagtail project, so the likelihood of removing requests is low. But uh, wagtail could switch to an asynchronous model, and I don't think requests is async. So yeah, I think I should I need to define this as top level requests. Now all that this compile command does is um, generates the requirements text and requirements dev text. It doesn't actually change the environment or run the installers. I've got another helper for that. And as I mentioned, I want to stick as close as possible to just pip. So I have this few commands relating to Docker. This doesn't quite work anymore. But we, in the development environment, like to clear the database every once in a while. But I need to also install the dependencies. And you can see here, just pip install is all that is. But it's passing in the in a development environment where we'll be installing, we'll need both dev and production development uh, and dependencies. So here we just added requests as a like top level dependency. And then essentially, you know, where it was only a dependency of Wagtail, now we know it's a top level by Project Toml. This is very nice. Pip uh, doesn't do this by default. These comments are added by the pip tools. So it's a nice little way of tracking, hey, where is that dependency coming from? You know, Pi time zone is coming from model cluster and Django rest framework localization. One thing that takes a little bit longer, but I can do. In this dev.py's upgrade dependencies. Let me show how that works. Update devs. The updates are pre commits and upgrades are environment. Here I'm just mixing all sorts of things into this pull request. It's not, don't do this at home. Don't follow my lead here. This is why not to do that. But it's nice, it does everything in once. Most of these are point upgrades. Django has a security release, we need to keep that up to date anyway. Model cluster, go PG. Most of these are non backwards compatibility breaking, except URL lib. Let's roll it, roll with it. Those were the web hooks. And then running this now is helping me identify some last minute uh, cleanup. I'm sort of earmarking this. I'm having some network difficulties. Before committing this, I just want to make sure that I've got some of the front end stuff ready to ex uh, ready to render this template. 
So let's now get to that. This no longer exists, but here's where we will the page body will stream field contain a stream field that will allow us to construct these uh, this grid of <laughs> subscription options. We should only have three, but uh, whatever. Sometimes we're just clinging to the way things did used to work. It's going to lead to weirdness. Not always, but sometimes. So uh, what we've got is a subscription index page. An intro, now we need a body. Equals stream field. And for whatever reason, the VS Code just can't find Wagtail imports. Yeah, it's annoying. It's right here. I mean, it's even in our it's the environment. The, the environment is activated. Um, that's why. No, but this is just not a uh, black tail box. Whoops. We will not have an image chooser but the intro text let's see the intro text already exists uh, the editor can decide what they want on this page from wf blocks from blocks as wf blocks we're going to create a distinction between that and in this index page we will allow a not an image that's a bit too much what we will allow row and this doesn't exist apparently we have a card row media block so i've defined a row card row ah interesting yeah it makes sense so a list block is what we will inherit from It's fairly meta. I'll be right back. So I'm, I think convert this to a generic row. Ah, it's kind of hard. This is where I get a little bit confused by how Wagtail things are defined. I need to clear my. Brain for just one second, refresh my tea. Be right back. Now the thing here to decide is how general or specific I want to be. Am I going to make a general solution that lets lets the editor define a arbitrary row of, of columns? That's essentially what Bootstrap gives us, and the developer uses those typically. That would be a beneficial feature. Then the content manager could just do whatever they want with that row and column grid, and uh, it would solve use cases outside of just this subscription flow. Conversely, this is a very a specific, a bit little higher purpose, higher order, I guess. It's for viewing listing page cards it's a card row it's still at the level layer of bootstrap so this template is used at this layer and then this has its own internal definition and own template it's essentially a struct block. I believe that's where I should start perhaps at the leaf node right now. Yeah. So leaf node is a PayPal. I need to see how deep into root I want to get of abstract of um, the dependency. So I'm at the outer layer. Anyway, I don't know where I am. PayPal block though is where I'll go. So it's essentially by convention, my own convention here is putting in blocks up on. And basically, the it'll inherit from struct block. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. And it's pretty close, except we just don't need the user. Now we need this HTML, which I have in another file. Wait a minute. Right. I believe I'll put it here, Timbo's PayPal. I don't know that there will be other blocks, but to distinguish it. And the icon will be like a link for now. It's the I, I'll even, I'm just gonna get this into the user interface. So the PayPal subscription card is actually this thing I've been looking at. here and I could call it PayPal subscription button they in fact call it a button then I don't need this then I can change a little bit of my definition I'm using, I'm trying to be consistent with the PayPal terminology so that when I'm coming from the perspective of the PayPal development docs and I've got this PayPal subscription button in my mind, uh, then I understand what the PayPal subscription button is here, means here. And then this block is coming from the wagtail. So I have to sort of meet in the confluence of those two paradigms. And then now we need to get this into the stream field. Let's just try at the at the very level of um, the top level, and then later I'll get into a row first. Let's see if it'll render. Step one: break down the challenge into smaller bits, right? <laughs> uh, then compose it into higher level. So I don't need a row. Let's just say PayPal button equals. Now I need to import this from PayPal. PayPal blocks. Did I get it? Yeah. It's just not used. And where's my blocks dot PayPal subscription button? Belongs on some format. I'll just format this. So here's my basic remembrance and understanding of how the stream field works. Stream field is a list. It takes a list as the first argument, it's, and it's essentially a list of blocks. Each item in the list is a meta representation of a block and it has a key and a value the key is like the generic block name as it would be stored in the uh, field itself here these can vary uh, the value is a particular block in like instance or class it has to inherit uh, fundamentally from something in the wagtail blocks which inherently uh, you know comes from the block at the base of its inheritance class and does a bunch of stuff for us now the concept of a block maps basically to the web development idea or concept of a component. Whereas web components, for example, are comprised of JavaScript and some HTML template markup and perhaps CSS like in an isolated and encapsulated manner. This is a combination of Python and HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So basically the rendered output comes through the Django templated language by convention, but not necessity there's more flexibility to it and a lot of this stuff is defined in python a lot of the logic to prepare the data for example for rendering in this case i believe since i have a template here paypal subscription id so i can just i can just i should call this the plan id because that's how paypal is referring to it there's a distinction to be made between the paypal subscription id and the plan id the subscription id is the subscription instance that a person has created the plan idea is the choice that the person can make okay so actually plan ideas plan id is correct here and this is a bit verbose but yeah And 
then in the template, we just need to say, oops, anywhere I see plan ID, well, here. In our system, I need to refer to it as PayPal plan ID, so it's to disambiguate the use of plan ID. Even though we don't have plans in our system anymore, they're all in PayPal, I just want to kind of prefix things with where they're coming from. PayPal just calls it plan ID because at this point we're within like the PayPal context. And here, plan ID means PayPal plan ID. But here, in our system, prior to populating this template with data, or hydrating it as people are calling, it's in our backend system, or in our database, or user interface as a PayPal plan ID. This will be populated in the Wagtail user interface. Okay, so that's one of the small details, but nonetheless. And essentially what I'm doing here is we're going to be listing multiple of these on the same page. So the PayPal button needs to render into a container, and the container is selected via a CSS selector. And since there will be multiple of them, I need a unique selector. And so essentially what I'm doing is prefixing it this way and with this to make it unique. So you can see here's the container. It's essentially has the ID there. And so this is fairly conventional stuff. I hope this is all going to work. Let's find out. And then we'll figure out how to handle the callback at some point. I'm going to have to sign off pretty soon. So the next step is to kind of set one up in the PayPal sandbox, render this in the Wagtail UI, see if I can, in the Wagtail administrator interface, access this. So run the server and there's probably some migration I need to make. Yeah. I think JSON field is okay. It's indexable and all that good stuff. So for the stream field here, I need to make this model migration. Believing We're adding a new field here. So. And we'll migrate that in. We will then access it. We will then go to login. And we will go to the administrative interface. And essentially in the Wagtail page hierarchy, we have a root page and a subscribe page. Now if I edit this, we have the intro and the body's missing because I haven't added it here. So this reloads, if it, there it goes. I can reload here and we'll have a body field here, which is essentially a stream field. It's a list of blocks. And so far I've allowed two blocks and each has an icon. And so I can add a paragraph, some nice paragraph text, and then a PayPal button, which will take a PayPal plan ID. And, uh, you know, this is very powerful and cool interface. There's like inline commenting. You can move stuff around, copy blocks, arrange it, uh, preview it. This is all generated by Wagtail. It's very cool. Like I was saying at the beginning of this stream, it's essentially a, a really well-designed and evolved uh, content editor experience, user experience. Whereas we've been mostly focusing on the developer experience here. I'll come back to these. So I need to get a PayPal plan ID, sandbox, PayPal, email or phone number. Over here, I have my PayPal uh, sandbox user account. Let me grab that. I'll just mute real quick while I'm doing this. All right, I'm doing this off stream because it's my little developer account and I just need the sandbox accounts. We're gonna log into the business account for the sandbox user, which is this. First time I copy it to clipboard, it gives me undefined JavaScript error. Great UX PayPal. And I asked it to go to the transaction log, which, you know, it's got some dummy data. It's refreshing this. Uh, what do we need to do is pay or get paid. Oh, maximize it so it's easier to find. I think it's under finance. Sales descriptions, here we go. Now, I just need the plan ID. I think I've already defined one. No, all right, so we will accept those in the sandbox. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, so we've already got a defined one. Let's just grab it real quick. This is the plan subscription plan ID, and you simply just paste it there and um, publish. And it okay, so here's the subscribe page now. We have just some text, and there is like if you notice an intro text field and body field. We're going to come to this in just a moment. I published that and I view live and we don't even see the introduction text. So there's already a problem, but that's cool. We'll fix it. So now we're going to look at the subscription index page here. And as it was 
plain to see there's no introduction text so let's do this uh, if page dot intro right is that it yes yeah, so we save this and it refresh it I think or is it still thinking about it oh this is wagtail whoops load that's right wow and just this though <laughs> that's all I need oh but not everything damn I can't remember if that was it. Now we have this rich text modifier. I'm not actually even sure this is a rich text field. It is. Okay, so now we have, uh, let's just put a paragraph here. So now we have that. So what we need to do essentially is just render the body. And I'll just check, uh, it might just be this. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So I think I renamed the template in the code, but not in the there we go. file system. It's a big, long thing, but uh, PayPal subscription plan button. Just trying to be real clear to myself. So nice paragraph text. Now what I think I need to do is PayPal button is there. PayPal button container is there. The script is there. Oh, it did work, but, but, what I need to do is wrap this in an on load because it's, yeah, I'm not sure when it's happening, but it needs to happen on page load. All right, so that's then over here. So I think if I, so, uh, <laughs> How do I even define a JavaScript function? Good grief. Define a function. Oh yeah, that, that. yeah, I need the JS SDK. Ah, that's good. That's, it won't work there. That's, that's the main reason, I believe. So everything over here is good. That doesn't include the J SDK, okay. I'll include the PayPal SDK on the subscription index page. Let's see. That's good. I don't know if we need vault. Or intention. We'll come back to it. So we do need to provide the PayPal client ID. That's clear. That comes back in this view. And conditionally loads. Let me double check. All right, so I do have it in my environment. Let me double check here. That's the correct one. Yeah. So what we'll do is in this view that renders the index HTML, which is this model between index page, we will override the get context to uh, from the Django settings we need the Django settings so from Django we have settings I using to be a block right now setting client ID. I'll assign that to the settings context. And for this I have to just double check, but it's shoot. Coming from our core settings, perhaps dynamically. It doesn't have to be in core. I'm not sure. Alright. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Here it is. So yeah, we're getting those environment variables. So that should at least include the PayPal SDK. Take another quick break. We're getting some good progress though. I'll be right back. Alright, very good. So let's just refer back to the docs real quick on the SDK. I'm only going to do what they're specifying here. So we get the ID and the client. So let's go back to index, client, ID, PayPal client ID. Uh, then they're not saying intent, so I'm not sure where all this came from. Whoa. And components equals buttons. It's default, so we don't need that even. Mark those fields, running out of your yeah, we might go over into hosted fields and all that good stuff later. But I think that's all you need. All right. 
Uh, the comment here is okay. So we don't need this anymore, that's working. Uh, let's just check that this uh, PayPal thing happened and even... I'm ready already. Okay. Well, let's see if it works. Try one more time, please. All right, so we do have some Wagtail vendor stuff, extra JS, like a Django debug, PayPal script. Uh, looks like it got it, and oh goodness! Ah, wow! Cross site. Uh, so one thing I just realized. Ah. Ah, that's why my enter button is getting stuck on. I need to clean my keyboard. So let's just see if this. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Uh, sort of makes sense. Missing. Subscribe. We have 200 here. I think this is being called before that's so on page load. <laughs> it's either my keyboard button is stuck. It's like, there we are. That's what I'm after. Or something's going wrong with my Bluetooth. Maybe I should just get a wired keyboard, honestly. There it goes. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. It's on load. All good. No problem. So we get a PayPal thing and then what happens? Okay, so it's not quite working, but it's sort of getting close. Vault is true. Okay. <laughs> There's something that's in my computer freaking out, causing a bunch of key presses. I got a really cheap keyboard a while back. Wireless? I was looking for a quiet one. Uh, okay, so basically vault is true needs to be passed to the SDK. Come on. Stay with it. Look at this. It's when my computer starts to think. It's like not even that I'm pressing the button. So we did need that. Vault is true. And equals true. Very cool. And maybe the intent is there. That it was also maybe not hallucinated. This is getting dysfunctional. And this is also like a strange long standing. Uh, now, granted, I make typos. But there's also been this weird buffer issue where. My key presses come out in the wrong order. <laughs> I think it's this keyboard. This was probably a typo, but also since this keyboard is freaking out so much. I'm wondering. Intended subscription. Wow. That was on the money. It, were, it was correct. Our baby con is not there. That's a different thing. All right. Okay. Something else. Oh my gosh. All right. Our value is not there. We're getting close. Though. These are different errors. And when we have different errors, that's exciting. So, so, ooh, here's the problem now. The context is shifted. It's in a block. I, to get data from the block is like kind of a thing called block dot. This is just a reminder. I need to take a break. Yeah, and here I can check just by inspecting this container. It's synthesizing. Some weird stuff is going down. My system is about to crash. Yes, so this is all working. And of course you can find the div container even if the PayPal subscription ID is none because it will match. But if I come here and look basically for your parent. Where's your parent? What are you doing here at the park alone? Where's your parent at? There it is. Okay, well, let's just go this way. Uh, or, you know, the other way to do it is just do this. Paragraph it. Synthesizing. Don't synthesize. This is what happens when AI starts to get involved. The technology starts to go awry. This type of stuff. It's not what we expect from like the Terminator movies. It's just mind-boggling strangeness. Things just not working. All right. I'm guessing here. So that was the wrong guess. I'll just look at another block that we've used, a template. So in the blocks, value. Oh, okay. Yeah. Close. All right. So block dot turns to value dot. No, don't synthesize. 
Oh my gosh. Don't synthesize. Mm, synthesis is happening. See, it's like still hitting enter. Is it my keyboard? Is it my editor? Is it my operating system? Is it my AI personal assistant? Stop. I wonder. I wonder. Yes. 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 But, okay, it's progress. It's a good stopping point. In fact, I need to go get some lunch. The problem is it's not displaying this information. I think that's by design because all it's supposed to render is the buttons. Yeah, okay. Well, I think we'll just need to make an API call to get that data and fill it in. Or enter. Yeah, because if I, for example, create a plan, delete, delete plan. Well, 10 euros, $10. You know, it's the affordable one. Turn plan on. No disassemble. Turn plan on. Oh, yeah. Update the product. So there is still some bunkiness with my keyboard or whatever it is. Turn plan on. $10. Turn plan on. My keyboard is still freaking out. That's enter being pressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's the thing. It is only going to render these buttons. Dang it. Which might be good. We might be back in a middle ground where we can define the subscription prices in our system and then pass the uh, dynamically calculated price to PayPal as magazines of subscription. I'll have to come back to this, but yeah, I think it's definitely progress. Definitely progress. Can we get PayPal to sort of render out the... Uh, So yeah, I totally misread this and was expecting it to look like the mock-up. Bell, doing some stuff. We'll come back to this. Mock-up here. This is it. It's all hard-coded there. All right, all right. Specify only the back end and somehow dynamically, when we create a subscription instance, pass in by this configuration object, the pricing configuration. Those are like the three kind of ways I, uh, I was leaning towards the last way of doing this dynamic calculation and then subscribing and getting the subscription instance back. But it's a bit complicated. So now I'm going to lean towards the most the extremely into PayPal side of things is just fetch it at runtime. And I'll store any of those details in our system. None of them. Completely with PayPal. So for that, I'll need to grab this uh, by the API, and I can do this in a call. You know, in our back end, when when constructing the page context, which means it's going to be a bit slow, but we'll cache the value for some amount of time. We'll need a way to bust the cache, even for one day, though. I think is pretty decent. Yeah, all right. But hey, this is actually really good progress. <laughs> I'll have to think more about it, but uh, excellent stopping point because we've got the card rendering in the user interface, right? Where is it? Again, here, boom. Plan ID, card, uh, payment buttons, I mean, rendering. It will uh, initiate the flow and I can test with a sandbox account somehow. Let's try refreshing this page. Somehow it got a little bit stuck. Refresh the browser. PayPal is, oh, it did, there it is. Now still, there we are, there we are. So we're gonna try with the personal user now. Goodness gracious, we gotta log back in. Logged back in, personal sandbox user, copy, paste, D. Copy, copy twice just so we don't get undefined pasty. And yeah, so it's got the value and it's got a fake thing and then it's got this agree and subscribe. Let's just see if we get into a transaction. That's a big milestone actually. And no alert, no alert. So something else. Ha okay. I think we're like 90% of the way there on air. I think I need an error handler. Yeah, I've got Copilot shut off. It's I don't think Copilot was the problem. Definitely not Copilot with this enter problem. I think something my keyboard is triggering Copilot. I don't think it was the fundamental issue here. Arrow. And we'll uh, 
log it out so you can see the keyboard still doing it. And I think that was why I was triggering. I think I had to replace this keyboard E waste, trying to reduce my footprint. I don't think we need to explicitly handle the issue here. I'm going to commit this and call it good. So <laughs> this has been another live code hangout. We're really uh, into it. We made some great progress. We're able to render the PayPal buttons and oh, it came back. It works. It works. All right. The subscription was created. Maybe I just didn't notice that. Nonetheless, we've got an end to end flow. This is the good part. <laughs> so I'm rendering buttons, uh, able to go through the PayPal subscription flow, come back, and now we will need to handle the on success event as well as render the subscription details in line. So this has been another live code hangout. Thanks for checking it out. And I hope you're doing well. If you'd like to get involved with this project, you can check us out on GitHub under the Western Friend Organization, the WF website project. If you'd like to view the changes in progress that I'm making during this live stream, check out pull request number nine, and you can look directly in our code base, of course, for the specific changes. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're doing well and have a great day.